Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Project Locust MX5. So this is the current state of it. So there's not nothing's changed since since the end of the last episode. So that's how it sits. As you can see it's a very miserable Welsh day out there. Windy and rainy. So I managed to drag myself to the shed this Saturday. So I'll just tell you what I'm gonna to do today. So the steering rack is buried in the middle of all this crap. You can just see the end of it there. So I'll dig that out and my plan with that is before I before I fit it is to um, depower it so basically turn it into a manual rack and the reason I'm doing that is rather than getting a manual rack is because the depowered racks have a better ratio um, basically a tighter turning ratio mm -hmm. so um, that's the, the thinking behind that one and the other thing I need to do is get the springs off these shocks just to give them a bit of a tidy up and a little coat of paint and I've finally got the correct bolts for the bottoms and the tops as well and another thing I'll just roll it forwards I don't know what the light is like for you guys there but where I've put this bit going down it's hitting the top suspension arm so I've been a little bit greedy with space there so uh, that needs just cutting and welding a welding another bit in which I didn't really want to do because I thought I thought most of the welding was done on this now but oh well it's not the end of the world so uh, so yeah and I need to do small small alterations to the bottom arms where the nut goes for the bolt that holds the bottom of the shock in but I'll show you that um, when I get to it so the first thing I'll do is I'll make a start on the rack um, also I've been tidying I've got room in there now even the go-karts in there now um, so room to the work in there now so I can get the steering rack on the bench in there and um, we can get on with that and uh, so yeah get on with it right then strip the uh, shocks off the car that's how it sits there now I've just unbolted them so I can leave leave that alone for a bit. Come in here, it's nice and warm. Got the fire on in there. As you can see, there's no glass on it, but as you can see, there's a bit of a fire going on in there. Which I'm very grateful for because it keeps me nice and warm. I've got the springs sitting on here to keep them not to warm them up. So when I'm sanding them. Give them a coat of paint after. Um, but they've got half chance of going off. Right, so here's the steering rack. Really monkey, disgusting. Mark 1 MX5 power steering rack. So, got all these pipes. They'll all be going. Um, and I believe the process is to take, take these off. Um, take the inner tie rods off um, undo that, that nut back there take that off and then there's a circlip underneath there there's that big nut oh crap there's a big nut there and then there's another nut underneath it and then there's this one here as well which is like the adjuster take them off take the brackets off there um, strip it right down take these pipes off it's one two three um, and then inside here so the, there's a seal which I need to cut off uh, grease it all up and then that'll be the uh, that'll be it so I'll strip it down and then I'll get back to you well that's the rack in pieces so this is the Sort of pinion area, it's draining at the moment. Because any last fluid that's in it, that's why it's like that. So, I still need to take these two little pipes off. I've cut them two off, that will blank them two holes after. I'll show you that after. So, here are all the parts. So, you've got your main um, shaft or whatever you want to call it, and then that there 
is the bit I need to cut off because that's the bit that um, you've basically got fluid this side and fluid that side so whenever you turn left or right that's where it gets pushed again so I need to get rid of that because that's just going to cause some drag um, that is the that's the collar that goes on this end um, that's the clip that holds the collar in that's a disc cap, that's the nut and the circlip that hold the this bit in which when you turn your wheel turns the um, shaft thing and diverts the fluid through these little holes so, um, so yeah you got your inner track rods outer track rod ends which I'll change because they're, they're buggered um, these just need to clean, they're actually in really good condition just a little uh, union joint thing dust cap for it dust cap and then just the brackets there so yeah so I'll, I'm going to go for a cup of tea now while that's draining and then clean all this up give that a bit of a clean maybe even just give it just a blow over with some paint just to tidy it up um, and then I'll cut that off I'll show me cutting that off and then I'll record rebuilding it I didn't, I didn't bother recording taking it apart because um, because we'd be here all day otherwise so right cup of tea time right so them belts have been cleaned up uh, just the, the metal bit of the rack there painted black same with the springs and they're on the makeshift paint dryer there and them, them bits there I've had a bit of silver on just tidy them up Right then, so the next job is to remove this. Um, it is a separate part that's pressed on to this, I believe. Um, I've seen a video of this done, and basically grind grind through this on two sides, and then it splits and comes off. And then um, I'll probably have to give give them bits another half an hour to dry so I'll clean clean these small bits up while I'm waiting for that to happen and clean them up and I can pull the um let's get the bottom arms off the car as well so I'll get on with that As you can see, um, just nicked it slightly there. It's no, uh, no great deal. That's off there now. Goodbye. And there's a little, there's a little clip with a joint in it. Okay, so I'll pop that off now, and then I think we can begin. Reassembly, so I'll find some grease and we'll uh, start rebuilding. Right, so it's time for reassembly. So I've got the got the rack in the vice here now. So that's a bit of pain, it's still a little bit tacky, but um, I've blocked all little holes up with um, this really tough um, block of stuff, but it's only to stop dust and stuff going in. So um, some people undo these and put a bolt in and stuff, but I'm not going that far. So we've got some grease, multi-purpose grease, little brush to put it on with. I always like using a brush rather than my finger. Right then, so this is the first bit to go in. So this goes in, so when it's in the rack it sits like um, that, I think it is. Because uh, the this is the tensioner here, so that sits on the um, on this bit. So, yep, quite happy with that. So, get this get this put in. Right. So I'm gonna grease this bit up because that's where the pinion meets the uh, thing, and I'll give this a light greasing as it's going in so get plenty of plenty of grease in this um, 
toast keyed bit, whatever you want to call it. Plenty of grease Hang on that now I'll start sliding it in so and there we go and there is a slot it's got to go through like a seal so there we go it's gone through the seal there now so I'll keep putting grease on as I go right so that's in now so uh, sticking out this end as it as it should be the tension was spring loaded I just had to hold it in the screwdriver that's that's all it was the whole idea of a tensioner is to to make this so it's um, so it's not really easy to move so it gives you a smooth, smooth steering. So I don't know how well you can see down there. I'll try and zoom in. You can see the just the slight edge of the teeth, just here. And um, that's where that, that pinion bit goes in. So well, the next bit to go in is the sleeve for this end. Just this bit. All that does is just um, supports the end of supports the end of the uh, shaft. I'm going to call it. So I'll lightly grease this up. Slides over that. And that goes in to there. I'll just get what can I get to tap that with? So it just needs to pop in. So I'll try just using the edge of this. Oops. What else could I use? Just because this is handy. So you can hear the change of note on that, so it's gone all the way in. And just holding that in is this little um, metal ring. Yeah, so that just clips. It's a groove for it in there, I'll show you now. And you want this joint to be um, where this little hole and the rack is because then it you can put a screwdriver through the hole to get this clip out in the future well it's not the sort of thing you need to be uh, getting out all the time so it's just a case of easing that clip in so there we go so that's in so that's this side uh, i think is that all there was? Yeah, that's all there was holding this side in. Um, and then on this side, well, that's just how it is on this side. It's ready for the for the boot on there. All right then. So the next bit we have is this pinion to go back in. So this is the bit you need plenty of grease on here. So this goes down, down. Obviously, you're gonna to have to get them to engage with the the rack as well. So do it do it once. Plenty of grease on this. Can never have too much grease, unless of course it's flying out the other end. So. 
switch there. It's engaged now, as you can see, the, uh, the rack's moving. So I just need to take it with that little, little tap, just to just to bed, bed the seal. And then hold, holding that in is this little circle. So adjust it a little bit. Not too much. Little circlip. Always in the top, so where's my circlip pliers? What do I do with them? Oh, there we go. So this circlip sits in here. There you go, like that. So that's what holds that in. So right, then let's turn this over. See on this end, it's the other end of the pinion. Just zoom in on that. You can see where the grease was on the end of that. All right, so going in there first, just this little coal bearing. First, I'll see if I can get a little bit more fresh grease into this. Right, that's us. That can go in there. So that's all the way down. And next is this uh, 17 mil nut, which goes on that. And smooth. So we'll get some more grease in there because this was when I took it off. This was it's quite a bit. Of, there was quite a bit of grease in there. So get a nice mount back in, and then you have this dust cap, which is a twenty-one mil dust cap. Goes on there. Do, 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 do. Right, so I'll tighten that up, um, and then I'll I'll bring you back when I'm putting the ends on. Right, as you can see, I've brought that one back to life. Um, it's not perfectly clean, but it looks a lot better than. Than it did before. Uh, this one's not quite as softy and springy as that one, but I'll see if I can bring this one up to look sort of good. And I'll show you how I did it. So I used this WD40 high performance silicon lubricant. Uh, you should always use silicon based lubricant on plastics because um, it won't dry dry up the same. So I'll just spray some of that on. Then got a stiff, stiff brush, and then just brushed it. Brushed it through.
and just dried off the uh, excess. So I think you'll agree that looks um, ten times better for an old boot. Um, it's no rips, no tears. It's just nothing. The reason why I can't reuse it. Um, so yeah, just makes the whole job look a little bit better. And because it's silicon based, it'll it'll stay sitting on top of the plastic. So hopefully it'll look like that for a while. So yeah, there we go. Top tip. Right. So the next step is getting the uh, inner track rods on. These are in really good condition. There's no play in them or anything, which is good news. So I'll make uh, use of these again. I'm just giving them a bit of spray just to tart them up. So there's these two little, I don't know how well you can see them, two little pins or like floppy bendy bits there. They sit in this groove. So you just got to make sure you get them lined up when you, when you thread this in. That's let's call it there now. So I will just turn it in by hand as far as I can. And what you got to remember is you you want these flat bits to line up with these bits that so they can be bent back onto this is like a locking ring. All right, so also it should be with all four of them bits um, bent over super tight there now. So that is ready now for. The boot. Right, so that's the steering rack done. Um, the rubber's just a bit, a bit folded there, but yeah, that's it. So the track rods end, end is on, so I'll be getting these replaced because, as you can see, the rubber's no good. So we've um, refreshed, shall we say, them. Cleaned up and painted this bit, blocked off the all four, six holes. Um, I've given this a clean, same as I did the uh, the others. So, so there we go. Right, so I think that's me finished for the day there now. I've got the uh, rear shocks back on. They look much better. I've not bothered putting the wheel back on the back because I still need to alter that piece of metal which I'll do in the next episode but on the front I've got the freshly painted shock back on and proper bolt in the, um, I've purposely left a bit through in case I want to mount a light or whatever that's a perfect um, spot to mount that to got the front wheels on the rack is in looking good and I even, I even went to the shed and got the steering rack out the um, Steering rack, column, steering column, and it's all connected up. Well, I've got a makeshift seat here so I can go in. I'll give you a uh, demonstration. So, plenty of room. I'm definitely going to get a smaller, smaller steering wheel um, with a bit of a deep dish, probably a removable one. Uh, if the if the budget allows, so can turn right, and left, which is great, and um, obviously using the MX-5 column, it's a collapsible one, um, so it's safe. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be it for today. Uh, next time I'll sort them suspension things down there out and if I can get all that done relatively quickly I'll either start on the brake lines or I will um, put the engine gearbox uh, prop shaft and the PPF in but I'm not sure I'm a bit like this whether to do the brake pipes first um, if any, any of you guys have done something like this before, um, what would you do first? 
the obvious one is brakes bag first gives more room but there's going to be a fair amount of room around the engine and gearbox anyway so I'm thinking of just getting the engine gearbox in just big thing out of the way then and I can do the brakes and then if I'm waiting for parts of the brakes I can uh, make a start on the wiring and um, maybe like the dash area so so yeah if you if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying the project um, subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll be sat in this seat well makeshift seat a bit more in the future so um, yeah I've had a good day it's taken all day to do what I've done but oh well I've never done anything like the thing with the rack before and that works absolutely great so like the steering is like one turn either way it's um it's great so yeah i probably have smaller wider tires especially on the, definitely definitely on the back here um i do know where i do know where there is some some from the three tires so I just have to get some wheels made to fit them so but anyway stop rambling on thanks for watching see you next time